Hello and welcome to IIPA. I'm Rakhi Bakshi. Today we are presenting you this special show where we talk to some of the bright minds and also discuss with them as to what's around in terms of public administration, public policy and the kind of atmosphere of governance which is prevailing right now in our country. So right now with us is a very, very special guest again, Mr. Abhinav Gopal. He is an IS of 2020 batch and now serving as CDO of Ghaziabad, Uttar Pradesh. So we are going to talk to him about ETSU, what's happening in the country and what is what all is he doing. Welcome to the show first, Abhinav. Thank you, ma'am. And, uh, you know, we'll start by talking about this whole horizon of, uh, uh, you know, Bharat, the Sankalp that we have, Viksit Bharat Sankalp. And uh, how would you really look at this whole umbrella and the roadmap to development as such? Because we are also talking about Vision 2047. As far as the concept of uh, Viksit Bharat, uh, which envisages that India should be a developed country by 2047. Uh, so the basic uh, uh, concept behind this Yatra was to reach the people who haven't got the benefit of the social welfare schemes, especially those who have, you know, who are living in uh, far you know, corners of the country or the state or the villages or who have been left out. So through this Yatra, we went village to village. And in every village, it's like the all the departments, they came to your doorstep. So in a village, for example, almost more than 20 departments, they set up their stalls and they do their homework. Mm -hmm. For example, if tomorrow the Yatra is coming uh, to the village, they ensure that through Pradhan, through uh, social various social mobilization uh, techniques, they reach out to people and they make sure that who, as in the people, who couldn't come to the headquarters or who couldn't go to or who were not aware about these schemes or who couldn't go to the common service centers to enroll themselves. Mm. So they can just come to the uh, Viksit Bharat uh, Yatra and usually this Yatra uh, which happens in a common place. So you're saying Jaipur. basically that now the outreach is much greater. We're penetrating much more as far as reaching the real people. In fact, we're talking about the last mile, you know, reach yes, so, that the, so that the person who's really at the last mile we reach that person also and deliver the services, isn't it? Absolutely, ma'am. Uh, this is the true picture you can have uh, uh, of the last mile connectivity, as we say. So it, it's the uh, people who were left out, as I said, I'm just repeating uh, that uh, who were left out, mm. they got enrolled in the social welfare schemes. Say, for example, PM Ujjwala Yojana. Mm. Those who were left out of the scheme who couldn't get the cylinders or who were not aware of the cylinders, for example, in Ghaziabad, you know, on an average, in mm -hmm. every village we had more than uh, more than 10 to 15 because Ghaziabad is an urbanized mm -hmm. uh, district. And as as a CDO, I am looking uh, after the rural development. Mm -hmm. So on on that parameter also, we were getting on on an average 10 to 15 connections request for 10 to 15 connections in a village. Mm -hmm. That means we we still have people who have who haven't got the services or haven't got the benefit of the social welfare scheme because they didn't know about it or they had some kind of uh, you know problem or hesitation to go out and you know, ask for the services or you know, enroll themselves so because, this year at this point of time we're talking about this uh, those four sections that honorable prime minister exactly, talks yeah. about uh, you are mahila garib and kisan kisan so yes, reaching out to those who really need it the most exactly ma'am and the enrollment also for for example uh, the one which i was quoting uh, the pm ujjwala yojana women were the majority okay. they they came and they enrolled themselves so what is your experience as far as women are concerned because lots being done also for the women in terms of schemes but how is it reaching them and how are they aware about actually accessing it and using it I can explain it by ma'am using an example um, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, we we have self help groups mm -hmm. you must have heard mm -hmm. and uh, honorable prime minister has given us that tar target of uh, you know lakhpati didis exactly so, honestly telling you ma'am today uh, the cover uh, has been uh, increased from 2 crores to 3 crores 3 crores yes yeah. ma'am yes ma'am I, I have seen women ma'am who are working in uh, you know SHGs or working with the SHGs and uh, some of them are working on uh, say cow dung based products, mm. gober based products mm -hmm. and uh, they have done tremendous work and uh, through this yatra, these SHGs are taking their products in the entire and through uh, in, the, in, the, in the entire district. They're taking their products to this yatra yeah. basically. We have ensured that these women also get engaged and... So there's a lot of movement. Movement, though. exactly. Yeah. And people get to know that, okay, fine, this can also be done. So women specifically, they are getting to know, fine, achha, ye bhi ho sakta hai kya? 
मतलब व्हेन दे गेट ट्रेंड एंड दैट स्केलिंग पार्ट इज बीइंग डन स्केलिंग वर्क एग्जैक्टली मैम दैट्स व्हाई दे कुड दे कैन मेक द प्रोडक्ट्स एंड दे वर इंश्योरिंग दैट दे दे गेटिंग ट्रेंड प्रॉपर्ली एज़ फार एज़ अंडर नेशनल रूरल लाइवलीहुड मिशन एनआरएलएम सो दे गेटिंग ट्रेंड अंडर इट देन वी आर आल्सो गाइडिंग देम हाउ टू मार्केट देयर प्रोडक्ट्स ओके so uh, women um, what we are calling land to market also like yes from land to market so i'm just giving one example of nrlm one how women they, and one sg they, and how uh, they who are, being done who, yeah. who are doing the stories, great, are stories. yes actually. exactly but ma'am. as cdo of ghaziabad you know what are the kind of challenges also i mean the whole plan is to develop the area but i mean what how would you really share your experience in terms of how the road map is what are you working on and what could be those uh, some odd elements that you would like to actually do away with right now ma'am honestly ma'am uh, we have many schemes right ma'am and uh, also the government has been you know on, uh, emphasizing more on convergence okay so the two convergence because ma'am uh, we have a scheme on waste uh, management we mm. have a scheme on water supply we have a scheme on uh, uh, women empowerment we have scheme on uh, so many other things uh, for the rural development because mm. right now i'm a cdo i'm looking after the rural development mm. so in a village we have many things and we have a scheme for everything so the main issue which comes out at the field is of convergence ma'am because we have for example say anganwadi we have a staff of anganwadi who have to work in tandem with the health department now these two have to work in tandem with the ration shops mm. Then, so the linkages the yeah. linkages ma'am and that is the biggest challenge which we are facing and that is what we are working in ghaziabad yeah. on the convergence ma'am convergence of efforts convergence of funds convergence of manpower mm-hmm. convergence of training okay and that's so a that huge task huge task because ma'am we have to make sure because uh, ghaziabad has been doing really well as far as saturation is concerned okay. or achieving of targets is concerned okay. and it has been because of interdepartmental coordination this joint effort this convergence which okay. i'm talking about good so yeah. the convergence is really important ma'am because you now we get for example people keep complaining about we don't have fund we don't have fund we have funds it's just that the convergence is not happening because and add to that technology part absolutely ma'am convergence is happening through technology okay. the technology is a via media basically it's it's a medium okay uh, yeah, for this convergence yeah, yeah. exactly ma'am say for a very very uh, normal thing like a meeting mm. For example, it's not possible for a field functionary to come to district headquarters for the meeting every day or every you know uh, every week. So we have a simple technology, a VC, yeah, just to ensure that all of them are on the same page. Okay. For example, in Vikasat Bharat Sankalp Yatra, we ensure that all the district level officers, all the field functionaries, all the major uh, stakeholders who are on the field, they are on the same page as far as the Vikasat Bharat Sankalp Yatra is concerned. Concerned. So we had a meeting. Mm-hmm. For example, initially we had four or five meetings before the starting of uh, Yatra, of all the departments who who were to establish their stalls or who have to be present there in the Vikasat Bharat Yatra, and we told them you have to do all these these three three four four things in which they had to take data from other departments also. Okay. So giving them a target. and to coordinate with the other and departments and you're also saying that everyone is engaged now exactly i'm exactly everyone ma'am. is engaged and making Probably. the right efforts also absolutely, absolutely so talking about since we are sitting here at iip the whole scenario of public administration what is your view as to where we are and what is all that we should be doing we're talking about digital technology in governance more and more e governance coming in what are those elements that you would also suggest here based on your experience and insights that should also uh, make us all you know more positively inclined towards doing things being a field officer hmm. i can talk about examples i no, can talk about that's the best actually the, the, <laughs> yes ma'am because there. i won't be able to give a very you know um, academic answer that but that's the practical that. example actually exactly that you're ma'am, exactly ma'am. Yeah. so i'll just with an example again i'll uh, ma'am, which has been going on in my mind uh, hmm. for uh, quite some time for example if i uh, went uh, to a vikasat bharat sankal hmm. patra event in some village now during the as in when i am traveling i am traveling on a road now that's a damaged road now i'm i'm wondering who is maintaining this road mm. who had built this road mm. and why it is like in this why condition why it is like in this condition and then i'll have to call someone okay fine i i say i i call some of my staff mm. and uh, try to explain to him this is the road to this place to a place to b place and this is where the road is in a in a bad condition who is maintaining it i'll ask him my mm. staff my staff will try to contact someone mm. in the in the department say okay. pwd say nhai or someone basically and they'll try to theek okay, find who is maintaining this road mm. so uh, maybe this process and tab process will take one week 
Okay, just to, to find just out. to find out who is maintaining and then exactly to find out what exactly is the problem and has, has the fund been requested for it okay. or has the file moved in? Would has you uh, would you call it routine or do you think that can be done away with? Ma'am, this can be done with that. That's why I'm coming to the solution as in what exactly you are looking at in the future, the technology mm-hmm. part which you you know uh, mm-hmm. uh, earlier mentioned. So, for example, I have an application and my location is there on that uh, application. And I can see on which road I am traveling mm. and who is maintaining that road. Yeah, sustained monitoring. I see. Exactly, ma'am. And then uh, I can see that how many schools are there around me, mm. how many children are enrolled in it, how many teachers are there. Just on a click, you know, for example, I just click, uh, for example, my location is mm. here. I can I can see on the location that, okay, there's a school that, that side. Mm. Let me see what is there in the school. and. Maybe I can just go, go and uh, see the school a random inspection kind of thing and just tally with what is mentioned here and yeah. for example, four and students enroll in the school, are they really present there? Are the teachers there? Just an example. You're actually talking about that Vixit Bharat that we're talking about. Exactly, that- ma'am. So in the end, we have this application or technology in which we can, you know, anyone, any any normal uh, person also can just look at it and just go and uh, see, see to it. And this ensures a good convergence, mm-hmm. a good coordination and uh, prompt action mm-hmm. on any, any on any issue basically so such kind of things and from what i have studied and uh, you know i need mm-hmm. to really uh, go for the practical implementation also the pm gati shakti program exactly i was coming is, to yes pm gati shakti part, infrastructure yeah. part and that is what pm gati shakti is going to do and now we have received the instructions also that the dms and the you know mm-hmm. subordinates can start using it okay. on this so this is one part ma'am just no, no, so an all this I'm is related to... actually. Yes, ma'am. And in that, you become a karma yogi that we're talking yes, about. Ma'am. Yes, so ma'am. how Absolutely. is being that also? A lot of responsibilities, but then uh, how to really take on that responsibility for the betterment of your society, people and all that. How would you really like to just share your views here? As in uh, karma yogi? As in, as yeah, in, as I'm not in... able to understand as in what No, I mean, are... now that we are talking about the karma yogi Bharat concept, where mm-hmm. uh, where uh, all that that you've explained is part of that actually only. Mm-hmm. So how to really take it forward? What is that vision that you have that can be done? More uh, development, how to synergize things. Like already you've shared your examples, the field mm-hmm. work. But any other insight that you'd like to share there? We are talking about the vision. So we are talking about digital technology, how to then synergize all these elements. But is there uh, is there any other roadmap that you have? Because again, you your experiences will come from the field only. Ma'am, in the end, see, uh, the roadmap, if you're saying, ma'am, in the end, I think um, the real power comes when the power goes to the people. Hmm, exactly. Especially, huh, especially when uh, those people... Uh, who are the lowest rung basically exactly you said it yeah and when those people started exercising their you know, rights and when they start get to know their rights and they start questioning that is when the real empowerment come and that is where we have to go the, the road map okay right now because ma'am someone is coming to us someone is saying ki, hai, this is our problem please help us in this when that per- same person will come to me and say ki, see we have these these rights and we have these, these schemes and please get us enrolled in it or I have enrolled in it Very and nice. so that is the transition that is when ma'am this uh, concept of being dependent which will go down on and there is a lot of focus also on the Grameen Bharat exactly so the yeah. rural and you are handling that rural development so how would you really see it the you know a focal point also and a game changer in a way as far as development is concerned absolutely because of so many things which are happening and the focus is are is the rural area you know whether it's about women or young people or even startups which are coming from rural areas, the yes, alternate ma'am. livelihood methods which are coming from there. So you would say that's a happy thing which is happening? Absolutely. Ma'am. It, it is happening and uh, uh, things are changing. Uh, for example, um, farming, say yeah. agriculture. Agriculture is changing and for example, Ghaziabad is a sugarcane uh, yeah. uh, sugar belt basically. You know, uh, more than uh, 50,000 50, uh, hectares is under the... Uh, uh, okay. under, under, under sugar cane Covered, cultivation yeah. and and right now we are working on it that uh, it can be converted to trench cultivation for because in trench you can go for multi-cropping and uh, drip irrigation so efficient use of water so that agriculture part that will be uh, in my opinion uh, will be the key part as far as economics is concerned because economics goes up 
this entire rural development thing it will go up because if you have money in your pocket for example then you will demand services exactly for example water is not coming but you don't have pipe water supply or say the the waste generate generated mm-hmm. in your house is not being taken care of is not being disposed of or uh, uh, in in any problem basically you're facing or your your children is going to the school and he is not you know, the teacher is not uh, explaining him properly or is all she, those things. exactly all those things ma'am will they will start questioning all those things basically mm-hmm. when they, this economic empowerment will happen and that's how ma'am the rural development the road map will go uh, to and the grievances are being heard in large numbers so i mean for example Absolutely. there is there is this department here which looks at grievances coming from citizens mm. and it is being heard in large numbers i mean more than before i think and being addressed also so i'm sure at at the at your level at the district level it is really happening also that so many you know the citizen engagement has become much more much deeper i would say it has mama and because we are interacting through various mediums now we have integrated grievance redressal system uh, in in up we have so people can uh, file the complaints mm-hmm. online and then we have to you know give the reply within next uh, 14 days and then he can actually submit his feedback also it's positive or negative mm-hmm. and it's being monitored at the highest level yeah so and there are many mediums there are many other mediums we have uh, cm helpline okay. we have igrs and then we have to mentally sit in office every morning 10 to 12 people can come and you know just register their complaints and again we are follow, following it up so uh, that has become really you know easy for a common man to uh, you know register so on the him. one hand the social landscape that one is looking at how to really address that and make it better and on the other hand the progressive outlook that should also be maintained and i'm sure you're also handling that and doing it also there at your absolutely. end absolutely absolutely so uh, now i come to some of these technical points the second section i would say which is mainly also meant for those who want to take up a career in civil services uh especially upsc so i would now come to your uh, career and your journey as to how the preparation was i mean uh, somebody would ask whether you know studied long hours or there was a particular method or strategy what would you suggest as to what you did and what others should be doing from based on your experiences mom it's always a smart study as we say smart study is the key now what what i mean by smart study is you don't have to study for you know hours or just you know just keep you know uh, uh, go, as in keep going through every chapter every line hmm. you have to you know a smart learning is about basically what is Grasping being it, yeah. like what what exactly is being asked what exactly is the issue what are the major issues which are going on right now because if you for example i'll just uh, quote a very simple example if you just analyze the last 10 years papers of upsc you can actually find out key what are the key uh, subjects which are being asked and those are very relevant topics for example you will get the maximum question from economics you will get mm. maximum question from environment you will get maximum question from polity why because these are the most relevant mm. to, uh, to, topics to, as far as civil services is concerned so and your practical work later. practical work related exactly mom mm. after that and even at the you know uh, higher echelon of bureaucracy you have to have <laughs> understanding of these uh three or four basic uh, subjects so smart study is basically understanding what important issues are mm. and then start working on them and then you have to analyze okay what exact uh, even in these because these are very broad topics economics is a very huge huge topic and what exactly is being asked again what are the important topics within economics within mm-hmm. environment okay so the focused reading right? focused reading ma'am and uh, that is how i'm a uh, smart study which, what subjects you know, did you take ma'am as optional i took uh, sociology sociology mm-hmm. is option and otherwise uh, four gs papers are compulsory mm-hmm. and then we have compulsory english uh regional language paper and then essay and how was your study in terms of uh, studying for preliminary then uh, mains and interviews uh ma'am it's actually uh, initially it has to be a combined manner uh say 3 or 4 months before uh, prelims you just keep going through the current affairs mm. you keep practicing for answers for mains because in mains you have to write 5000 words in mm. one uh one setting so basically three hours so how is that different hours. different you know like people were uh, preparing for prelims and then mains which is more narrative exactly and that's why you have to develop your uh, ground or base base before uh, you start preparing for uh, prelims mm. so current affairs along with optional say four year four months before prelims you mm, still no as i know you are, you are st- already doing for last one year see for me one year minimum is required for this mm. for some base uh, setting up 
so say for 8 9 months you do a combined study of prelims and mains and optional obviously then 4 months before prelims you start preparing specifically for prelims because prelims is mcq multiple choice mm-hmm. questions and you really need to be smart and uh, mm-hmm. you know you have to develop your intuition yeah okay develop your intuition now because people say that intuitive people can do it but intuitive people have to develop their intuitions also mm-hmm. and intuition comes through practice okay and प्रैक्टिस से क्या होता है आपका इंटर कनेक्टिविटी जितना आप इंटर कनेक्ट कर पाते हैं सब्जेक्ट्स को क्योंकि प्रॉब्लम्स में होता क्या है आई टेल यू मैम आउट ऑफ 100 क्वेश्चंस यू विल बी श्योर अबाउट ओनली 30 क्वेश्चंस ओके या देन एवरीवन हैज अ रेंज फॉर एग्जांपल समबडी विल अटेम्प्ट 80 क्वेश्चंस समबडी अटेम्प्ट 90 क्वेश्चंस समबडी अटेम्प्ट ऑल द 100 क्वेश्चंस डिपेंडिंग ऑन देयर एक्यूरेसी सो आफ्टर 30 इट कम्स टू 50 50 वाला बिकॉज़ से when you go through first reading uh, the question paper you say you you have uh, solved mm. 30 questions which you are very sure about mm. and then next you come to the questions in which you are sure about two mm, exactly. options and that's that's uh, when your intuition this interconnectivity of the subjects comes into picture what you've read broadly, broadly and then you pinpoint exactly it, pinpoint yeah. ma'am you can connect geography with history you can connect history with environment mm. when you interconnect all these things and then you got start getting these so intuitions so how do you get that mental acumen because a lot of people and young yes. people are watching i would like them to understand that that to get that rigor you know of practice ma'am okay matlab uh, for me it used to be at least 50 60 you know test papers before going to prelims mock tests and especially in those subjects in which i was weak or in which i was making more mistake hmm. so test practice is very very important in this very aspect for for, for developing this intuition and, and things to study and uh, to keep your hands on in terms of journals or books or newspapers and for prelims so it is current affairs mm. and it is up to you that how do you want to uh, cover those it can be through journals it can be through magazines it can be through only newspapers or it can be through very just given by the coaching institutions Mm. so it is up to you it's it's, it's your flavor matlab how do you want to take it up even okay yeah. and one thing which is a very stereotypical question but everyone would like to ask as to how do you handle the pressure so sometimes people say okay once you fail then you you know how do you really manage or the kind of stress and anxiety which also happens so how to handle all that or is is there something that you had to also deal with yes ma'am obviously because even i took almost five attempts <laughs> to crack this examination and uh, uh I do ma'am it's a very individual uh, specific yeah, yeah, uh, question be, yeah, yeah. it is very individual specific so but for me ma'am uh, it was because i mean what kept you going then i mean more one is ma'am the aim mm. because you were so focus uh, i mean go. yes ma'am focus is really important yeah. for focus you need some objective in your life i have to get it yeah it's like that Something, arjun no, ka teen not ex- only examination mm. even you should have some kind life of life goal life goal exactly ma'am some kind of life goal it can mean any area it can mean education area it can mean health area this is a very honest answer i am telling no, you no i i, I so, can get it sensitive uh, for yeah. for me it was a sports ma'am so okay. for example a sports is something which i really look up to you know contributing towards okay so for example whenever i used to fail uh, you know i used to think that should i continue or not should i you know continue mm. preparation mm. or not and then i used to think okay fine if i become will i have as in something manifesting in a way yeah manifesting plus my experiences ma'am okay. because ma'am just to ensure that ki my motivation uh, doesn't go i have worked with ngos mm-hmm. i have worked with the uh, you know departments in bihar as in oh, nice. my internships experiences ma'am I, uh, mm-hmm. which i utilized for my motivation because ma'am, i have worked with snehalya in ahmednagar in oh, pune nice. this is for the people who are watching it i mean yes ma'am really i work that. yes ma'am exactly ma'am. so during my internships and then i utilized my vacations in school and uh, and college okay because usually people used to go uh, for internships to you know uh, foreign countries or maybe some lucrative kind of you no know, mm. places where they can get uh, pre placement offers because i've studied from uh, iit ma mm. so i i thought ki nahi nahi i think my and, and, and my mission is to refer to iit background does mm-hmm. that also help again i was talking about rigor is that it does there is a temperament that it you get it does help it does help ma'am i wouldn't deny that it does help ma'am because you have studied with the brightest mind of the country hmm. so uh, you do get sense of feeling fine okay somebody will be always good somebody will be better than you you have to understand it and uh, you have to accept it uh, but also the kind of environment iit gives because uh, you know we have number of fests we have number of discussions we have 
you know uh, interdepartmental courses which you can take up so those things really help that that environment basically the kind of environment we get the academic environment we get in iit but it's all getting so diverse now there's people coming from all kinds of areas exactly yeah, and exactly. Uh, uh, all kinds of sectors and things absolutely like that. it's, and it's that like, should be that should be the ma'am uh, you know the, the uh, baseline uh, because when you get people from different background then you can have uh, diverse opinions and policies exactly. and, uh, def- and different methods and to approach things and it opens up to new ideas and absolutely like, absolutely yeah. ma'am so So, uh, what would you tell some of these youngsters who are aspiring? I mean, what could be the mantra that you would like to share here? Mantra for uh, the tips to uh, to how to prepare for UPSC, how to crack it, and all that. Do your homework first, because uh, for homework you'll have to analyze a number of things. You have to analyze, you know, previous uh, papers. You have to analyze what where your acumen acumen lies. Uh, then you have to analyze how much time do you have, how much resources do you have. do you have support from a family do you have mm. financial support do you have other kind of academic uh, support so you have to do all this background work then only you'll have to jump into the preparation phase this is the mool mantra ma'am because this is where people uh, you know sometimes just get confused. get into and then they get uh, disheartened mm. and then you know some problems uh, creep in and you have to and because you know uh, so there are there are personal things sometimes and then yes, you have so to you have to analyze something. all those things and then you have to jump into the picture because some people everyone has different approach ma'am mm-hmm. everyone has has their own as an has his or own uh, approach for example somebody maybe will be uh, you know targeting first the uh, group b jobs or group mm-hmm. c jobs and then they start targeting the group a jobs mm-hmm. true somebody will start some directly other job jump that they've competed exactly, but then like going maybe, for yes. this because uh, everyone has different confidence level everyone has their own different preparation levels even the kind of family background or kind of educational background you're coming from that also p- p- plays a and huge role and the kind role. of pressures you have for example there's social media there's so much of uh, i would say yeah. uh, things that are calling you how do you deal with that either you can completely stop using social <laughs> media or you can utilize it in a very efficient manner very, very, and very selective very manner. selective manner ma'am and i was i'm i am in the second category so i used to as uh, in uh, you know utilize the social media but in a very selective manner and use the algorithm they have developed themselves for example if you are continuously seeing some topic they will start feeding the same topic yeah that's we yeah we understand that yeah so that's how you can actually utilize it utilize it also yeah you positively keep, yeah. positively ma'am because in prelims things can be really random sometimes so you really need to have you know a very broad understanding you know just keep sometimes you just keep reading random things also and something you get connected to something somewhere okay so i now come back to you again you are being the cdo in gaziabad and uh, you know sitting there on a chair of responsibility and trying to do so much for the people how is it for you uh, you know to do things it's really uh, i would say heartening first of all and then uh, the sense of responsibility you feel because uh, the kind of resources you have been you know, you know uh, given way then the kind of financial human resources other resources and then you have to utilize it in a very very you know uh, intelligent manner as if it's your own money basically mm. and uh, and you have to ensure that Because it there's reaches a lot of focus now on districts i mean in terms of the yes, focus ma'am. we've seen that now districts aspirational districts we are talking about so you're talking about lot of governance which happens at the basic level and that's where i think uh, you know your role becomes very important from our role as executive mm. and which obviously is my aim also in my own as in uh, in the district i am uh, working it's it's actually you know getting these whatever the schemes laws which are being made by the government the policies are being followed it is being transmitted it is being basically reaching the last mile in the end that's the uh, that's basic real, goal and that's a job ma'am. that's a, that's a real job ma'am because especially when you have people working in uh, different sectors reaching out to those people making them understand these things you know and as i said converging all the resources mm. and then you know uh, getting to the last person that is the real job which we are doing and that is what we are actually you know i'm uh, targeting in in our district okay so any dream any wish that you'd like to share here personally professionally i mean as an officer as an officer ma'am as i told my motivation was sports so my life goal or my ambition is to see actually you know india winning 
the maximum number of medals in olympics and we we, we have kelo india that. now so absolutely ma'am and i'm really loving it uh, uh, thing and now i have actually got no through cdo as a cdo now i can actually work on uh, this these schemes and start working on it so in the end ma'am i really want india to be a sports hub be it in manufacturing be it uh, developing the sport or sporting talents you know be it people coming from other countries to get trained in india mm-hmm. as right now we are going outside our athletes are going outside and that's how i look ma'am that's so i think dream. there's a lot of science and there's a lot of creativity Absolutely. as far as sports is concerned it's both Absolutely. there you know you have a technique and you have a creativity also so i think that's a good goal that you have set yes, for yourself ma'am. and keep doing well and i can only wish you all the very best for whatever you do and all the challenges that you deal very effectively and efficiently and uh, all our good wishes once again and thank you for talking to us sparing your time i know that you have a very busy schedule <laughs> so uh, keep up the good work thank you thank you, thank you thank so you much so for sharing all the insights with our audience also and that was uh, mr abhinav gopal sharing all his insights about the kind of work he does presently but also about the career Uh, as a civil servant and what it goes inside i mean the kind of uh, you know pressures one deals with the kind of preparation one does keep watching our show to know much more like this in our future episodes also thank you so much once again and namaskar